everyone, it's the dulcet tones of me. Hello. Welcome to my weekly solo episode of Two Girls, One Pod. I'm recording on Wurundjeri country, as usual. Just me again today, and as I'll be doing every week, I'll be giving you a quick rundown of the things that I've been doing, the things that I'm into, the things that I'm not into, and of course, a listener DM or a she-mail or email and the ever so popular Evie's useful facts. I've got a good one for you guys today. I've got to stop saying you guys. I've really got to stop saying it. You know, that episode we did with Ash Pollen, we're talking about, you know, words that we've got to stop using. That's one I've really got to stop using, but I don't want to say you all all the time or y'all because that's so American. So, um, Forgive me when I say it. Uh, I try to pull myself up all the time. Um, What am I jonesing about this week? Okay, I read a great article by Annabelle Crabb about the World Cup and what took place between Jenny Amosa and Louis Rubiales. Um, It was so succinct and it mirrored so many of my own thoughts that, like... um, how men have overshadowed the incredible work and skill that the women have achieved in the world final. Um, And here are just a few (laughs) of those examples of men who um, have overshadowed the women and the incredible achievements. Did you know that Donald Trump, celebrated golf cheat, um, was bellowing at Megan Rapinoe for the double offence of missing a penalty and being a lesbian. Sevens David Bashir, he said while he was commentating about Matilda's midfielder Katrina Gorry, um, certainly motherhood has not blunted her competitive instincts, that's for sure. Um, I read a lot about that at the time and how so many people turned off and went over to Optus Sport to continue watching the game. Prince William, um, he is also the president of the Football Association, which is really quite ironic that he um, didn't bother to go to the tournament. Anyway, instead he recorded a video message um, with his young daughter Charlotte saying how sorry he was he couldn't attend the Lionesses final while encouraging them, are you ready, to go out there tomorrow and really enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yourselves. Like what they were doing was a hobby. (laughs) You can't write this stuff. And it was only last year, after all, that Sam Kerr surpassed Tim Cahill's goal-scoring record for Australia and was told by another former socceroo, Robbie Slater, that comparisons between the two greats was disrespectful to Cahill. Don't get me wrong, he said. Sam Kerr is a fantastic player and I'm delighted that she has now scored 54 times for Australia. Yes, she has scored more goals for the Matildas than any other player in history, he wrote at the time. But Tim Cahill was a Socceroo, not a Matilda. His 50 goals for the Socceroos is a record that shouldn't be overshadowed. Oh, I shouldn't laugh. By Kerr's achievements. Did they hear themselves? FIFA president Gianni Infantino, that is correct, in a powerful demonstration that nominative determinism lives on, the man's name basically translates to mad baby. Um, He chose the eve of the World Cup final to explain to female players that it was their responsibility to achieve equal treatment their responsibility. This is what he said. And I say to all the women, and you know I have four daughters, very reminiscent of um, Scott Morrison and Jenny coming to mind there. So I have a few at home. I say to all the women that you have the power to change. Pick the right fights. You have the power to change. You have the power to convince us men that what we have to do and what we have and what we don't have to do, you do it. Just do it. With men, with FIFA, you will find open doors. Just push the doors. (laughs) They're open. Um, Marina Hyde from The Guardian responded, I thought, beautifully. 
as well as Anna, Annabelle Crabb. Um, what can you say other than sorry, but I believe they're trying to play quite an important football, football match. Any chance you could get the door? After all, it is your actual job. Um, there's some brilliant writers that I've been reading this week um, in the response to just so many of the things that have been playing out lately with that World Cup. Um, now I'm going to get on to the Louis Rubiales and Jenny Hermosa scandal. Um, and let's not forget that Spain won. They won the whole thing, despite many of the team members resigning because of the irreconcilable differences between them and their coach, Jorge Vilda, who gets booed when he makes an appearance. I don't know what that is all about, but I, I read that and you can go and read that for yourself um, because that is a whole other rabbit hole that you need to go down if you want to. Um, okay, so firstly, Louis Rubiales, Spain's head of football. He was captured in the stands during the game, standing near the Queen who came over, um, reacting to the victory <laughs> in real time. Like, so we're watching it in real time. He punches the air and then with his right hand, he grabs his crutch through his pants and, you know, does that, yo, he, you know, that suck on this kind of action. Oh, God, you can actually go and watch it. There's actual footage um, and it's really gross. And then at the end is congratulating everyone and just one particular player he decided to grab, Jenny Hermosa, and with two hands forced a kiss on her mouth, with his mouth. Okay, so she's since come out and she's condemned the kiss and said that it was not consensual. She said that and people are saying she's incorrect. How can you say that, that, that's incorrect when she's the one that said it. This is what blows my mind more than anything is that you can prove something. You can have actual footage of something going down and people will still say no, that didn't happen or no, they're incorrect or no, just no, that's not what you think it is. All, and this is what Annabelle Crabbe said so beautifully, all this woman has done is be good at her job. All she has done is display merit. All she wants to do right now, presumably, is dance around with her colleagues and pour kava over her head while basking in the love and pride of her country. But no, now her moment of triumph will be forever marred, not just by her boss disrespecting her in front of a global audience, but by that same boss's decision that his personal status is more important than the achievement of his team. He has refused to resign. So, you know, get mad about that. Make sure that your children understand this story. Um, you know, if they're of age, I think, I think kids are older than five or six, you can explain this story to because, you know, they're our future. <laughs> they're the ones who are going to make the change and they're the ones who hopefully won't be leaving comments on sports stars' posts that disagree with them after they've said specifically something about how they feel. Um, I really hope that they do because, you know, Whitney Houston was never wrong when she said she believes that the children are the future. You treat them well. Yeah, let them lead the way. Okay, listener question. Remember, you can send me your listener questions. DM me or email twogirls at novapodcast.com.au. Um, we've got one from Tess today. Uh, she says, hi, Evie. I just wanted to email you to say that your podcast is amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I love Drawn Gogglebox. Well, thank you again. Um, but I was stoked to see you had a podcast. Mm, you really are empowering as you are so true to yourself. And I just think the world is so much brighter because of you in it. That is such a lovely thing to say. Stay amazing. I will try. I honestly will try. 
Um, what is your opinion on exercise? Would love to hear it. More along the lines of getting out there, trying something new, experiences with fitness, not so much to do with appearance or physical look with exercises. Um, with exercise, sorry. Thanks, Tess. Great Great email, great question, exercise. This is a big one for me. I often think about exercise. <laughs> I think about exercise more than I do exercise, which is really bad. And I was just talking to my friend this morning about exercise and how I, I've just done something to my buttocks because they are in pain like I've been, you know, doing Pilates or yoga um, and I'm not sure why or what I've done. I think I was hunched up. I think it might have been when I was doing the incidental exercise, um, which was, which is, you know, when you do the housework and all that, they call that incidental exercise. Um, I was washing the, the new, the two new foster dogs that I have. And I think I was squatting at the bath. Not, I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. What do I think of exercise? I think it is I'm really glad that you said, you know, not so much for the way we look because I think exercise, you know, is really brilliant for your brain, your mind. Um, it literally keeps us moving, doesn't it? With exercise, I reckon, find find what you like to do. My mum hated exercise. So, and it's really weird because I come from a family of sport lovers. My brother and my dad were huge sport players. Um, I was forced to do all these sports as a kid. And the really weird thing is um, that I was really quite, I excelled at sport a lot, but I hated it. So I just refused to do it. But I had have really good eye, co eye hand eye coordination and I can catch a ball, throw a ball really well. And um, I can pretty much pick up the skill of a sport pretty easily, but I refuse to do it because I just really didn't like, I don't like sweating. <laughs> um, so if you're like me and you don't like sweating, God help us, swimming. Swimming is a great one and it would be so, would be, it is so good for thoughts. Um, also aqua aerobics. I tried aqua aerobics and God, that was funny and really hard to do. I don't know how those oldies at the oldies homes do it. Um, you know, they do it for like a weekly thing. And it's my friend, when she was pregnant, would go to the oldies um, classes and she said they would outdo her every time in fitness levels, which I found brilliant. Go the oldies. Find what you like to do to move your body. There's your exercise, even if it is incidental. I mean, you look around the world and all of the countries in the Western culture, you know, we've made ourselves so... Oh, like we're just, we have everything that's done for us now. We have so many machines that work and do all the hard work for us that we now make ourselves go and do the exercise that in other countries are less fortunate than us. Would never ever think about having to do because they work their asses off physically um, and they're exercising constantly. Imagine them going to the gym. I think that's pretty funny. Um, I find that gym culture a really weird one, if that's what you're into. I certainly am not um, dissing you. I just find the culture really weird um, and obsessive. It gets, can get all-consuming, which, like anything, um, is not good. My dad has always said that, you know, it's good to be addicted to something healthy. And I'm like, I don't – I think that's an oxymoron. I always have thought that. Um, the – the last thing I'll say about exercise, if you don't know what else, like you can't find a sport that you like or um, a program like Pilates or yoga or, you know, um, a discipline that really suits you, change it up as much as you can. Don't stick to the one thing or do as I do, dance. Dance. Oh, God, I remember when that... That um, saying first came out, dance like no one's watching. Because we all, 
we all know what it's like to dance on our own in our own bedrooms as kids and then living rooms as adults, especially if you live on your own. Dancing. There's a great um, class called, I think, business that's called No Lights, No Lycra, which I think is just brilliant. How people don't bump into each other, I don't know, don't care. Um, they turn the lights off and you don't have to wear lycra, wear whatever you want, and they just put on really loud music. And I think dancing is the best way to get your exercise in if you're not really, like me, into exercise. Eve is useless facts. Eve is useless facts. Useless facts, useless facts. Okay. We're stepping back to the year 1887 where German-American inventor Emil Berliner invented the gramophone. The gramophone is that machine that has like a square box. You put a record on it and it has a big horn, massive horn that comes from the box and, and arches over and it plays music from the record to the entire room. Um, the gramophone was futuristic for its time, even if it's really primitive to us today, but it had no volume control. <laughs> so um, when things got really loud, which was all the time, um, you know, the, the, the record that was playing would be like um, instrumental, obviously instrumental music and operatic and it would get really loud. Um, an impromptu solution was to stuff something into the horn. Um, usually it was a sock because that muffled the sound best and the makeshift volume would reduce. So that's how we ended up with the saying. Oh, you already know what I'm going to say. Put a sock in it. Ah, put a sock in it. Um, it's now just a cheeky request for someone to shut the fuck up. So I might put a sock in it and head off. That's been my solo app for this week. I hope you're all well. Get in touch with me any which way you know how. Love to hear it. Thank you for listening. Um, special guest this week. Oh, you're going to like her. She's just written a book. It's a brilliant book. We talk all about the book. The book is so good. You need to read it. So make sure that you listen to this Thursday's ep coming out. You will not be disappointed with the chat. Talk to you all soon. Have a great day.